Donald Trump's winning streak continues. The former president's July 11 sentencing now pushed back to September 18th in his New York hush money case. So as Judge Merchan weighs the possible impact of a new Supreme Court ruling on presidential immunity, that's what happened there. Speaking of that decision, the liberal media has been giving some seriously dark predictions. This is a death squad ruling. This is a ruling that says that as long as you can construe it as an official or quasi-official act, you can do absolutely anything, absolutely anything, and never be held accountable, not only while you are president, but forever. They've declared the president and former presidents to be kings, but they've also declared themselves the hand mm. of the king. This People are exploring options to live in other countries if they think they could be targeted for prosecution by Donald Trump, because targeting you or targeting me or targeting Andrew would be an official act based on today's decision. And Democratic Congresswoman Zoe Lofkin, she might rise, raise some eyebrows with the feds over what she said about the Supreme Court watch. Theoretically, uh, President Biden, uh, acting within the scope of his official duties, could dispatch the military to take out the conservative justices on the court, and he'd be immune. Think so? Way to, way to lower the temperature in D.C., Greg. Yeah, it's not like Biden needed to do this to, to create criminal cases for uh, Trump. These dark predictions are a desperate pivot from their horrible reality. But again, they're always pivoting back to the same world that got them into this same disaster, which is Trump derangement fueled by these dystopian extremist fantasies. Like, once again, the world is going to end. Obviously, uh, Sotomayor's examples, the media's examples, they're completely ludicrous. People know that. But if you accept that explanation, then you end up having to pivot back into reality that you're stuck here with a, a dying president who isn't even really in office. It is ironic that the week Joe gets a cold, Trump gets complete immunity. <laughs> you know, it should tell you something, that maybe you're going about it wrong, media and Democrats. Your foundation for operation is deeply flawed. F flawed. Th these flights of dystopian fantasy reveal two problems. It's a drug to escape reality. Life sucks for you right now, but taking more of this fantasy pill might make you think it's going away, but it actually makes things worse. And as a filter to predict what happens in life, it doesn't work. Apocalyptic prisms never pan out. And what that does, it turns the voting base and, the, and your viewers into very cynical people. They learn not to trust you. They learn not to believe, believe you. Meanwhile, what do they call us? Faux news, yeah. right? Who was right on all of this stuff, yep. right? Maybe, I know Democrats and liberals watch The Five. They hate watch it. They love watch it. Who knows? Who was telling you the truth for so long? And who was lying to you? Who was gaslighting you? Them. Come on over. The water's warm. I'm wearing shorts. And not just because he's... Yes. Got to go to the bathroom in the pool. <laughs> uh, Judge, I don't know if you saw this, but there's a left-wing group called Demand for Justice, and they uh, get a lot of dark money. And they had that whole retire buyer campaign when they wanted him to get out of the Supreme Court. So they've just announced a $10 million campaign to attack the court and to try to discredit it. And yet then, at the same time, they say, what are we going to do? about the loss and faith of our institutions. Yeah, well, I think the left can certainly take credit for the for the destruction of institutions in our country, whether it's education, not having kids go to school during the pandemic and every metric set to make sure they don't go back to school, criminal justice system with this social justice, no bail, letting criminals out again. And the left can also take credit for the invasion at the border and the illegal crime. I mean, I could, I could just tick them all off. It doesn't matter at this point. They can do whatever they want want at this point. The American people, I believe, think that, you know, that understand the separation of powers and the three branches of government, and that what we've got is the Supreme Court that has the final say in all legal issues. Let them spend their money. Let them go crazy. It's not going to move anything. In fact, I think it's not as effective as it would have been a year ago, because the public's had enough. But one thing, Dana, um, I, I'd like to just comment on, on, on one thing as it relates to the delay in the sentencing. Oh, okay. Okay. Number one is is that the people asked for a delay in the sentencing uh, pending the court's decision, meaning Mershon, as to what impact the Supreme Court case has had. But the defense, Donald Trump's team, has asked for uh, the ability to file a motion to vacate the jury's verdict. That's what we call in New York a three 
or the 330, uh, 30 application. And so that you understand, so that the public understands, even though this is a state case, what is significant about this and may be totally impacted by the Supreme Court's decision is the fact that Juan Mershon allowed testimony in regarding official acts of the president. And so what are we talking about in this state prosecution? It's basically phone calls and witnesses in the Oval Office. It was Hope Hicks. It was Madeleine Westerhouse. It was a 2018 filing of his ethics report. Um, and, he, and Trump, his team kept saying to Mershon, look, we just got certiorari from the Supreme Court. Right. Can we delay this trial until the Supreme Court decides? Now the whole thing's going to blow up. Right. It's got to be reversed based upon the use of official acts. And you think of all those people that went through having to testify, they wouldn't have had to do it. Yep. All right. Richard, why can't the Democrats just take a chill? <laughs> I like that. Look, I, I will say this. Um, I, I think we—I expected some of some some form of immunity to come down because of the makeup of the court. It's very obvious that we live in a polarized society, and whoever the White House, whoever picks the Supreme Court justice, determines how they show up at the court. I, I do think for a moment— take Trump out of this decision and have this conversation about official acts, right, and put it into play with the Government Oversight Committee on the House, right, as they continue to investigate Joe Biden, right, which is what they've been doing for the past 18 months with no evidence. All of that goes away to me, because if you're looking at anything that the president did when he was officially the president, that's considered an official act. So this whole investigation is now— Oh, so mute. taking bribes is an official act? Well, it depends on what evidence you use to determine what an official act is, which is what the Supreme it's Court said. The, okay. All right. <laughs> So that means this I'll investigation it, is over. And then we'll fight about it later. Joey, give you the last word. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think if this were reversed and it were a liberal or Democrat president that brought this to the Supreme Court with the same makeup, it would be like a 5-4 decision in favor of immunity. I really do believe yeah. that. I, I think that you can't take the lens of what's happening in the world today out of it, but it's not because six justices have allegiance to President Trump. It's because they can sit here and see what is lawfare, and they understand there needs to be a protection against it because that will be the way forward. All right. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.